Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be playing some Star Trek Online. Been doing the daily missions. A few seconds here, we'll go rescue some Romulan ships that are trapped. Focused, oh nice. These numbers up here indicate how many points you get for rescuing the ship. Five is the highest. And it looks like they dropped more than one in the first wave. This is very rare. Now, normally you wouldn't want to try to take one of these high-level ships on yourself, but in theory, I should be fine. I do hate it when they do that to me, though. Let's see if my ship will fire. There we go. Get out of that stupid web. Now, once you kill all of the enemy ships, you have to disable these tractor beams. And since you can only do it one at a time, it's kind of nice to have someone else with you. They didn't seriously all go here, did they? I hope they're just splitting up and there's a couple of guys over here, too. I only see two here. But it's a public queue, so you never know what you're going to find. A Falchion Dreadnought is escaping. New readings on sensor. A Falchion More Dreadnought is escaping. Are on the way here. Okay, they did get that. Good. That's funny. So there was one guy on that, and these two guys this entire time. I haven't been able to get that one ship. Warning. Ship is under attack. Now, personally, I don't usually pick up those batteries. They're useful, of course. They give you extra power for your systems, but I don't use them. I mean, my hot bar is already full, and I don't want to put extra, you know, levels on there or extra extra rows. It's just too much stuff to keep track of. And I use my third row already. I keep it hidden, though. The first four tiles in it, or buttons, automatically... Uh, when I press one of my thumb mouse buttons, it activates those abilities. So, I don't like to have anything else there. And yes, since I'm in a cruiser, it is a little bit slow to turn around. I think this is the guy with the DPS. I might not want to double up with them, but everybody else seems to be over here, so maybe it doesn't matter. Oh, crap. My outside of this monstrosity. Maybe I can help him get out. Oh, they dropped another one. Really hate those things. Is anything still alive? It does not look like it. Now, admittedly, running this every single day does get a bit boring. But fortunately, it's not particularly difficult, and it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to run. Unlike Synthwave, which takes forever and is incredibly annoying. I keep forgetting to change from uh, speed to weapon power. These are little bonuses that I can give to myself and anyone within 5 kilometers distance. There we go. I do hate it when someone else shows up and aggros them. Oops. Sometimes it does not like to respond when you click buttons. Is he stuck in there? I probably should have helped him. Oh, no, he got out. Okay. Sometimes it is difficult to get out of those 
for some reason they've got this annoying bug where the Fulians will drop two of those on you. Oh, they did drop two of them. Yeah, and when they drop two of them on you, sometimes you cannot get out of them. A Delon Warbird is escaping. For some reason, sometimes there's just nothing to lock onto to start firing. If you can fire at the corners, you can break them. And you can shoot your way out of it. But when they drop two on you at once, sometimes there's nothing to lock onto, so you can't fire at the corners. So you basically get stuck in it. A Hapax Warbird is escaping! Usually the only time I die in one of these is when I'm stuck in two of those stupid webs and I can't get out. Now we did have optional objectives up here, but with me on the team and this other guy with high DPS, we complete them so fast that I don't even bother paying attention to them. What is this nonsense? Four shields failing. Right shield failing. I don't want to be close to that. Rear shield failing. I, I think I'm going to have to destroy this first. Stuck in a tractor beam and I can't move. Most of my weapons are up front, so if I can't turn around, I don't do much damage. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the game, you may be noticing that some loot will pop up on the screen when I select take items, and some will pop up over here. Anything that is uncommon or higher rarity will be over here and each member of the team can click a button to either say they want it or they don't want it. And anything that's common or white will pop up in the center and I can just pick it up directly. Do I need to go help them? Who's the other guy who had high DPS? A Hapax Warbird is escaping! Why is there... Do we have two AFKs? I know one of them's moving. Oh, he's the guy with the DPS. Did he die? It does happen. I mean, nobody here has, like, stupendous DPS, so... Mine is pretty reasonable, and this guy seems pretty reasonable as well. Is that someone shooting at me? No? Okay. Sometimes, at this particular spot, the enemy ships will just kind of fly off out of range. Not sure why they do that, but this other guy, he's got some kind of squadrons that he sent after them. Yeah, once again, I forgot to switch. I keep doing that. A Hapax Warbird is escaping. A Delon Warbird is escaping. The whole point of this is just to keep freeing ships and get as many points as you can until time is up. And the more points you get, the more rewards you get at the end. So, nope, there we go. And yes, these are uh, these ships are named after spiders. The Tholians are kind of like a spider-like race. And no, I don't care about the torpedoes. I wish my ship wouldn't target them at all. The only time I care is when it's a board plasma torpedo. Oh, that's, this is going to suck. This is going to suck. Fire, please. Fire, please. My ship isn't firing. Shoot at something. Come on. Oh, never mind. At this point, it's better for me to just cloak and decloak again because I have a huge DPS boost upon decloaking. It's kind of ridiculous. And it's not the ship. 
It's actually some traits I have slotted. Now they're considered starship traits, but they didn't come from this ship. I just like this ship because I managed to get a little better DPS with it. It maneuvers a little bit better for a cruiser. And the that, most of my weapons are up front, so... If I'm facing the enemy, I still do a decent amount of damage. And this ship does have, uh, what is it, like 12 console slots or something stupid like that? So I can have a ton of DPS consoles. Now I'm just going to say screw it and go with fire at will right off the bat. Just shoot at everything. I know it's kind of funny that these are considered weapons and they're shooting pulses of energy. But they're based off of the Star Trek Discovery weapons. They're actually those sensor-linked uh, phasers. They're really expensive if you uh, buy them off of the in-game exchange. And I mean expensive as in in-game energy credits that you get for uh, you know, selling in-game items to vendors and selling items on the exchange. Not in real-world dollars, although you can spend real-world dollars to buy garbage off of the in-game store and then sell it on the exchange in order to get enough money to buy stuff like this. But the bonus of these weapons is they significantly boost your critical damage stat. So if you can get a high uh, critical hit rate, your critical damage will be really high. I haven't really been paying much attention to my shields, have I? No matter what I do, if my shields go down, I die fast. Oh, didn't have enough time. I didn't pay attention to the time. Now, you'll notice I usually go with this top option, Fleet Mark Package. It's because I've maxed here and everything else and have the rewards I want for most of them, so I don't care about the rest of it. And uh, our fleet is unfortunately... Not uh, very far along, so I need as many fleet rewards as I can get. Well, that's it for this queue. Hopefully this video wasn't too boring. And uh, thank you for watching.